I have in my hands the hefty tome which is Mythos Tales. This, as you might gather by the name and the picture on the box, delves into the world of the Cthulhu Mythos. This time, however, from the investigative point of view very strongly. If you're familiar with the things like the, the Sherlock Holmes game and Detective, where the players are actively trying to sort of research the crime, read the clues, use the maps and various other uh, props that are provided in the, go in the box, then you're kind of on familiar territory with what Mythos Tales uh, by 8th Summit is now. If we crack this open, there's quite a bit of stuff in here. Now, full disclosure, this is a first edition print, and the first edition print has a flaw. The flaw is there's a couple of bits of text missing, and there's a couple of locations on the map that aren't on the map. Hmm, helpful. However, if that's the case, there is an errata online, but the second edition prints of it are fixed, and you don't need this. So, a couple of pages deal with any issues if you happen to have a first print one. How will I know if I've got a first print one? You can't solve the first mission. There you go. That's how. You're looking for places and they're not there. It's, it's that easy. There's always. But, you know, figure it out. You're smart people. So as you can see, there's a lot of things in here. Um, things. Lots of things. And we need to get the things out so we can talk about the things. Because we love things. Uh, one of the things that surprised me most whenever I got my first little glance at this. Do, 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 do. I'm just getting rid of the box, okay? With the, with the errata in it. Uh, one of the things that surprised me was this rather lovely hardback book. Isn't that very pretty? We like hardback books. I kind of expect most of these things, you know, yeah, I expect a nice map, and yes, I expect lots of lots of stuff, bits and clues and things. But generally speaking, these things kind of come with like magazine rule books and it's all kind of about, you know, thrown in a box and here, have fun. It's like an upgrade of a murder mystery dinner party game that you would get. Um, this, however, does, it has the right kind of lavish touch because they know the kind of market they're selling to. Me. Um, you will get closer looks at this because, again, how do you show people one of these things without giving the game away? Well, I can't. So, as the small pictures start to give you closer looks, if you intend to play this as a player at some stage, avert your gaze or, or you know, drink a lot so you don't remember anything. Because you might see things that could ruin surprises for you. I'm not going to try and decide later on what you're looking at and what you're not. The point, though, that I would come to, whilst... In some respects, this is very much uh, like find your own adventure path type of book. You know, like the old fighting fantasies, but broken down for multiple players. Um, this feels very much in keeping with the quality that you come to expect from things like K.O.Z. and products or the Mythos books that come out from the likes of Cubicle 7 and other people like that. So they are keeping the end up. No shortcuts have been taken. Um, in terms of the writing style, the story, without giving it away, flows very naturally and does feel very Cthulhu. It feels quite Lovecraftian uh, in most respects. Um, so yeah, I can't, it's like, oh, I want to tell you lots about it, but but I'm not going to because then you'll just shout at me and go, well, there's no point in buying it now. But no, in terms of how well put together this is, nice. Yes, okay, first edition, they missed a couple of things. Slap on the wrist, get over it. Moving on from that, they catch up the ground fairly quickly. And as I say, second ed has, has everything where it should be. We do get one magazine bit. This is the prologue. Um, so this is sort of just fills you in, and it, okay, it is magazine-y, it's the wet your appetite element of it, blah blah blah, you'll go through that, you'll rattle through it, and you'll you'll seldom refer, or need to refer back there again. Keep all these bits. Uh, not good at reading upside down. The Investigator's Record Booklet, and it is exactly as it suggests. Now what I love about this, lots of the expansions for Call of Cthulhu give you things like uh, prescription pads and doctor's letterheads from Arkham Asylum and Miskatonic University. This has done the same kind of thing. So to keep track 
of your adventures they have given you an oversized notebook so that you can write down key places what the evidence were what the leads were and footnotes that you need you're probably not wanting to go to write in this so you know photocopy it because it is kind of lush it's a nice wee touch the newspaper articles okay they're not actually on newspaper they've made them kind of a bit more durable obviously within the the context of the various adventures the newspapers will be useful in a number of scenarios so quite often you'll be reading through it and you are actively going through the paper looking for things relevant to the investigation that you're engaged on obviously the more you play it as you work through the adventures you'll start to remember if you've been the newspaper person oh hang on i read something about this in in last week's paper and i think that kind of helps it makes it feel good so yeah it would have been nice if these had been newspaper uh but they wouldn't have been maybe just as durable so they're that kind of you know that giveaway poster quality but they're quite they're quite nice anyway. and loads on them there's no wasted space and you know we adverts and things too are they relevant to the stories can't tell you i don't i don't actually know i haven't played them all so i don't actually know uh but it's just cute that they're all there and just again makes it look that little bit more plausible as a natural document um got an introductory sheet that just sort of tells you at the start of the game what the goal is how it works the components what they all do so without having to wade through a whole pile of books you've got one little five six page uh, brochure um that sets you up right to understand what you're going to be working with for everything else keep that to the end uh, we have a time tracker on nice sturdy card again there too these will have relevance for your games all the time and then the directory and it's done again arkham massachusetts directory 1928 to 1929 the new england telephone and telegraph company uh, this director contains a list of all the individuals, business and enterprise that you will need to consult during the course of your investigations. In many cases, you will find the entries sorted alphabetical for your convenience, usually by surname. Uh, and then it breaks down based on the map, the district, so you kind of narrow and down where you're having to look. But it's just nice that it's made to look like the telephone book. Again, if you're familiar with the Sherlock Holmes uh, game of, the, of a similar style, you're going to be in familiar territory with that too. Um... For no particular reasons, you get a bookmark. Be happy. You'll need it. You've got a big book, remember? It's relevant. Uh, there's another little handout there. Um, last night, it's just one of the, the adventure cards. Next one, sorry. And this. This I love. And it's the big map for Arkham itself. You're probably not going to be able to see it all, I imagine. No, okay, it's, it is quite clean. It's It's been sort of pruned down its basic it's not made to look sort of period in any way other than the the dark color of it but it's just kind of nice and again as a role player bearing in mind the directory and i'm kind of veering off this own games product kind of spiel but as a role player who plays call of cthulhu and whatnot the likes of the directory and the likes of this map see where i'm going here this could be quite useful to you but for the money, you're going to be wanting to play this as well. I wouldn't suggest you run out and buy this just to get those components and maybe make use of them. Um, but certainly, if you're kind of a bit of a mythos completist such as myself, you're probably going to get it. And I don't think you'll be disappointed in all honesty. Um, but I do think that if you think cleverly about it, if you think an awful lot there, it must be a thinky kind of a night. Anyway, I digress. The map and the directory could well find themselves working their way into your other games. And how much better than to have that familiarity with somewhere like Arkham, where your players can feel, you know, that the geography is very stabilised, and you as a GM then aren't kind of laboriously trying to make notes and streets that you've made up and places that you've made up. Just use them to your heart's content for NPCs or whatever. It's kind of lovely. And that's it. That's 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 all I've got to say to you. Um, again, I can't I can't rattle through in huge detail for you here. Um, you will see other reviews for it. You'll see other reviews for the likes of the Sherlock Holmes game and that. It those that this style of game is not going to be for everybody. It is kind of almost a slightly more traditional game. Dare I say, like the old Baker Street games and whatnot in the past. 
So, you know, you will find yourself sitting around the table. You will talk a lot about it. It's it's very role-playing light, if that helps. And it's something that you're not really sort of sure about. But I do think that with the Mythos one, they have gone that little bit further than they have with the likes of the Sherlock one. And obviously the, the detective game where you're using apps and whatnot, and it's quite modern day, it doesn't go that far because you're not pulling in apps and nobody needs their phones and whatnot around them. I do feel that for a group who's very into Call of Cthulhu, into the Mythos, into HP Lovecraft, regardless of the level of gamer you are, I think you could have a lot of fun with this and get a lot of mileage out of it. And there's certainly enough story uh, built in there that this could see the table quite a few times. Even if you're getting adventures right, there's, there's some merit to going back and sort of seeing, can you improve the score that you've got? Can you solve it in a different way? Can you talk to other people? Are there tricks and clues that you've missed to get a better rating at the end of it? So there you go. That's it. I'm done talking. Says you, thank goodness. Uh, go and check it out. As I say, just watch out whether you're maybe biting into a first edition copy. If you are, be prepared to download the errata online. If it's not, then you're laughing. You're good to go out of the box. And honestly, don't think you're going to regret it. It's good fun.